Is the VA trying to kill supplemental claims? Hey guys, I know that was a catchy intro, but I mean it. And that was a thought that I've had recently. Here's the scenario. Veterans are getting disability ratings and they've been rated low for one reason or another. Maybe they're getting a 30% rating on their PTSD when they probably should be closer to 70%. Maybe 10% rating for headaches when it should be 50%. What do we do to solve this? Well, there might be additional medical records or other evidence or even lay statements that we can include in an appeal to help the VA see that whatever the condition is, it's actually worse than the VA thinks it is. So we'll do that in a supplement mental claim and sometimes we'll do that in a supplemental claim within weeks of the rating decision coming out so right away well recently I've been getting these letters back from the VA saying well if you want to request for increase you got to file it on a 21526 EZ and not a 0995 and quite frankly guys I wish that these letters were as clear as that because they're really not. They'll just say that you have to file a different form and then not really be clear as to what form it is. So I did some digging and I found out that there's some people at the VA who when they receive a supplemental claim with new evidence discussing the severity of the injury, they just think it's a request for increase. Sometimes it'll make it all the way through, they'll actually honor that supplemental claim but only give you the effective date of whenever the VA decides to schedule a new exam. For instance, let's say you file a supplemental claim within one year of a rating decision on March 1st, and then they don't give you an exam until July 1st, and then they issue a rating decision on August 1st. They might say that your effective date is August 1st, or even July 1st. Well, this makes no sense. The claim has been continuously pursued. You should get an effective date that goes all the way back, but they'll hold on to this thing called facts found, and it's nonsense. Here's what we do. Here's how to fix it. If you disagree with your initial rating on a supplemental claim, whether it's been a year or whether it's been continuously pursued and timely filed, write on the supplemental claim form that you disagree with the initial rating that you got or whatever the last rating was. Also, your evidence should include something that discusses how bad it has been going all the way back as far as you can think of or remember and do so again with integrity, okay? So don't write like, oh, my headaches have been completely prostrating forever and ever and ever, if that's not true, right? So you have to be truthful in these statements. This is where the lay statement can really come in and be effective. After seeing these supplemental claims get either kicked back were rated with the wrong effective date, I thought to myself, man, is the VA just trying to kill these things? And the answer is no, it's just, it's a lack of training. The problem is, is that a lot of these individuals are not trained very well. The VA hired a bunch of new people to process the PACT Act claims, and then AMA was only passed three years ago, and they're still working out a lot of the bugs in the system and getting people trained up. It's incredibly frustrated. In the end, this is why a good VSO, accredited attorney, agent, what have you, needs to be on top of the file, really taking a look at what's going on, following up on erroneous rejection letters, appealing erroneous effective dates, and so on. With that said, if you filed a supplemental claim and the effective date isn't right, or something just doesn't look right, or they've rejected your supplemental claim, for reasons that don't make any sense, reach out to us, maybe we can help you out with that. If you like these videos, please share them. We're getting very close to a thousand subscribers uh, and it'd be awesome if we could get above that. But anyway, until next time, take care.